What is high-end? It is price, exclusivity, rarity, usually not mass-produced, exclusive to certain parts or regions of the world, the materials, I think I said that, whether it's handmade or not, plus there's a bunch more. So I ask before you cut this off and you just automatically write this video off like you've seen it, watch the rest of this. Hello everybody, how is everybody doing? This is gonna be a little bit of a different video. I was gonna do a review, but I figured I would not and I wanted to go over something. So let's just jump this off. What's going on everybody, Jay Hayes here. So today I'm not gonna be doing a review. I'm actually gonna be going over something that is inside of my head as of the past couple days. So I did the review on the Thrill DNA 60. And of course, right off the jump, a lot of people are like, Jay, don't worry about it. It's not that big of a deal. You're making a very valid point in regards to some of the problems that you see with the mod. And then of course you get some comments that says, well, you know, listen, you should have contacted the company. Listen, I'm not gonna go out there and contact companies. If contacts, if contacts want to company me, if <laughs> if you want to company me while we go see the contacts, uh, if companies want to contact me because I got something jacked up, then that's perfectly fine. But that's not what I am. But on the flip side of that, I'm saying to myself yesterday, I start waking up, I said, okay, well, we're at a point now where Maybe all these years I've been doing it wrong. Now just bear with me and just hear me out. A lot of these products that I get that are high-end, all over the wall behind me, I'm very quick to assume that something is high-end based off of the company that it comes from. Just because of the price where it's made, you know, the exclusivity, that's a huge part of the high-end factor. It's how exclusive that product is, how low of a number that product is. But then I came to realize something. I was watching Doug DeMuro, and he was doing a review on a Maserati. Now, automatically, in our mind, we think of Maserati, you think of high-end, right? Oh, my God, that's a high-end Maserati. But it's made by Fiat, which is made by Chrysler, who makes the LeBaron or did at one time, or the Sebring. I get it, I get it, because I drive an Audi. Audi makes Volkswagen, they also make Seat and Skoda, they make Lamborghinis and Bugattis, they make a lot of shit. So I can't really fault a company for making something cheap and making something high-end. Now, the only comparison that I'm gonna, uh, oh. That's what happens when, when a tooth touches the back of my tongue. That was strange. Okay, uh, I know. <laughs> Jay, did you just gag in the middle of talking? Yeah, yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. Now you know why I have a hard time brushing my teeth. I have no choice, but at this point, to start referencing really the logistic side of it. Why is this the price that it is? I was always quick to defend and say, well, you know, it's because this company made it or this is just high end because it's the way that it is without giving any real justification. Now, I know that there's people out there that aren't into high end that can't see justifying spending the money on a high end device, especially when it's five hundred dollars. And it does the same thing that another mod does. Now, in hindsight, you have to keep in mind that a Maserati a Lamborghini, and a Ford Escort all do the same thing. They drive. So it's just one may do it better than the other. But the problem is, is first off, a DNA 60 inside of this mod versus a DNA 60 inside of another mod, well, may perform a little bit differently because you have to calibrate these chips based off of the grounding of the mod, the resistance of the mod, or the metal that's inside the mod. There's a lot that goes into it. But that doesn't really jack up the price. That's just one extra little step you have to take. I can speak firsthand on this because I've made high-end mods. Because I've made high-end RDAs. So what I'm going to start doing at this point on is going to be very, very more stringent. Extremely more stringent. That's going to piss a lot of people off in the high-end realm. But if I'm going to get something that's $500, now there may be some videos that come out after this. And I really have no way to for you to know that this video came out afterwards. But just know in the next month, you'll start seeing that roll out because I do have things pre-recorded like the Starwood. Um, I 
I promise you that there's other high-end devices. For those of you that are wondering, and for those of you that don't wonder, and you already know this, but usually what makes a model a little bit more expensive is whether or not it comes in a stabilized wood, a hybrid resin, which is basically wood and a little bit of acrylic, basically you pour it, kind of makes it stronger. And stabilized wood typically is stabilized, meaning that they do put a type of resin on it to kind of hold it all together, but sometimes you'll get a wooden box mod that's, they label it as stabilized, but it's not really stabilized. Very rare, but it does happen. It's hard for me at this point to justify anything above $250 for a Delrin device. It really is. And this has taken me the last 24 hours of non-stop thinking. The only time that it would be okay is if there's such a low amount of them being made, then it could be deemed as acceptable. And usually that is the case with high-end. However, if you can find a high-end piece on multiple sites, it's usually not so limited. In a lot of my videos, I don't really talk about price. There's not really much of a point because some people, $200 may be something that they make in a day. Another person might make $200 in a week, which is usually the case. And that's a very shitty situation. And for that, if you're one of those people, then listen, I'm not going to sit here. I don't want to be sympathetic, but I can empathize with you because I was there. I was the guy pushing a Pepsi cart around English town. So would you like to get your Pepsi here? Come get your ice cold Pepsi. That's what I did at 15 years old. But then again, I also had a child and I had to pay child support. So there's that. It was either jail time or selling Pepsi. There are going to be certain devices that I'm going to review on this channel. And I'll continue to do it till the day that I die of high-end products that will continue to come out. Regardless of what FDA laws are out there, what laws, and it doesn't matter. These products will be made till vaping itself dies. Now that's not saying that there's not things that come out of China that aren't high-end-esque or high-end-ish. It's going to be very hard for anything for China to produce that's high-end for one reason only that falls in that very beginning bracket of what I just said, the availability. If you're mass producing a product, literally 99% of the time, it is not considered high-end. There are exceptions. Listen, people say that the gen is high-end. I don't know if I agree with that. I feel like it's in the medium block. I don't think it's high-end, high-end, like Skyfall territory. I think that it's it's worth its price point. I also know that there's people that charge $180 for a slam cap of the same dripper, but that's not the point. The point is, is that that is kind of, I, I don't want to say mass produced, but there's 3,000 of them. You take something like the GT3, there's like 10,000 of them. So you see where I'm going? The GT3 is a very, very, very high-end RTA. And argumentably, especially for me, the best RTA ever made. Now, I know that people with a tripod are having issues with batch two. I can't, I can't speak on that. But to me, that falls in that high-end category. However, I can only speak on the batch that I currently have to me. I can't speak on other ones unless, of course, I get that version. But all in all, I hope that this has given you a little bit of light in regards to what exactly high-end is, because I get that question a lot. And one more thing that I want to cover, I really don't want to put this in this video, but I'm going to, is clones. Clones in every field that we're in, whether that is iPhones, Samsungs, Motorola's, LG's, are very, very much frowned upon. I had just mentioned this in a video the other day. If you go watch everything Apple Pro, now the guy, obviously Apple's in his name, but it's not the point. He compares the Samsung $99 one to the new Note 1099 one, like the $1,099. And you could see how one is trying to be a clone of the other. Of course, it's not identical, and it's not considered a one-to-one -one clone. It's considered a clone. And even in that field of someone that loves Apple products, and he does other products, but it's not the point. The point is, is that whether it's Gucci, whether it's a handbag, whether clones across the world and every other field are frowned upon. It's just this field that we globally accept it. There's one thing positive that I think will come out of China stop making devices. First off, everybody and their mother could have the perfect setup right now with where we're at. We don't need to keep creating 
devices, right? Like, I think everybody can agree with that. Unless the technology advances, but that's not happening. It's just the same rebranded shit. What would make me happy is if these companies can no longer make a copy of, copy of, of a copy of, a copy of, a, of a copy of, a copy of. You ever take a piece of paper, make a photocopy of that. Then make a photocopy of that photocopy. Then make a photocopy of that photocopy that was photocopied. Do you see the more that you do it, it starts to degrade the quality and the and how it looks? That's exactly what we're experiencing today. I hope that this has shed a little bit of light about what the high-end field is. And in the meantime, I must go do a review on a high-end-esque type of product. I've kept it real. Have you? And no, that's not a hole in my shirt. Well, it is, but it's not. Jesus.